Conducting yourself in a proper and professional manner while doing business is expected to convey a good impression. Joining us now are two people who have made a business out of this by teaching etiquette. That's Courtney Carey, co-founder and director of the School of Etiquette, as well as Fraser Carey, who is a trainer at the school and professional speaker on a success as well as happiness in the workplace. Now, I must tell you, uh, when the two of you walked in, I did admit that uh, I'm self-conscious <laughs> today, wondering whether I should sit up straight, how to hold my hands and my pen in my hand. But when it comes to etiquette, Carey, Let's start with Kerry, not Kerry, but uh, Courtney. That's Let's start it. off with you with regard to what is etiquette and what does it entail? Well, etiquette can be defined as the fine art of getting along with people. So there was a misconception that it's all about dining skills and good manners, mm. but really it's about matching your behavior to fit the situation that you're in and engaging those people around you to make them feel comfortable and at ease. Because if someone likes you, they will support you, they will help you, they will choose you over another person. Mm. That's not something that you hear every day. And Fraser, no doubt you saw an opportunity in the South African market to, to, to assist uh, 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 Courtney with the implementation of the uh, etiquette school. Is, is there a strong demand for, for etiquette training in South Africa? Now more than ever. How come? International businessmen are flooding into Africa and South Africa and it's how we relate to these people our soft skills that seal the deal and especially when you're up against other people and competitors mm. if you have the people tend to do business with people they like and if you have a competitor who's invested in the skills the social skills that are necessary to do business business you at a disadvantage and you may very well lose that deal. You mentioned soft skills there and oftentimes mm. uh, Courtney we, we take we don't take into account that <coughs> women often have possess more soft skills than men. Does, does that count still in our, into our advantage? I would say in previous uh, previous times a lot of importance was put onto women and how to develop their skills and their arts whereas today there's not as much focus which is why I find it's quite alarming, in fact, because we spend 12 to 20 years approximately improving our technical skills, yet very little time is spent on our social skills. And a study was done by the Harvard Institute, mm. Carnegie Foundation, and Stanford, which found that 85% of your financial success in life is dependent on your social skills and only 15% on your technical skills and yet very little time is spent improving our social intelligence. That's a big number that you make mention of there. So, it so is, are, are it people is. taking this seriously in South Africa and, and what's the rate of return on that? Because uh, as you mentioned that you've got several corporates and businessmen coming into the South African market and uh, does that necessarily guarantee that if you've got the correct etiquette in place that uh, you'll seal the deal perhaps? it definitely will enhance it. It enhances your chances because there's a golden rule of business. Likeability and good manners lead to long lasting relationships which result in better deals and higher profits. Hmm. So it's how well you engage people, how much you get them to like you is going to decide whether they choose you or not. Hmm. Because so many com companies have the same product offering but do they have the service and the social skills to actually highlight and enhance their technical knowledge? Fraser, have you gotten mm. feedback from some of the clients that you work with with regard to this, perhaps? Absolutely. You know, we do a feedback uh, at the end of each of our courses, and the feedback is 9.55 out of 10, where people say it's, it's changed their lives. Hmm. Most 85% of people feel social anxiety we, we own a boutique hotel where we have glittering functions and you can see those people who arrive and feel out of place and it means they're concentrating on doing the right thing mm. rather than exuding the poise and presence which they should have. But uh, what is happening is that we are managing to get the word out and there's greater and greater interest in it. 
Well, uh, an off a business meeting start off with a coffee appointment and in front of us we've got a <laughs> teapot here. Uh, so I'd like to do a practical experiment on this to see exactly Great. whether my corporate or rather interaction soft skills as you mentioned there Fraser. Uh, yes. may, maybe you know you could give me a couple of pointers as to how to go Fabulous. about my next coffee appointment. Uh, could you give us directions as to in simple forms, how to pour a cup of tea, how to handle yourself, should I stick my pinky in the air or not? Most certainly, so I'll start off. I'm gonna pass you your cup first because you technically are my guest. Oh, thank you, Courtney. Absolutely. Do pleasure. I accept it with two hands or not? Or One hand sufficient, One but hand whichever sufficient. is more stable for you. Perfect. Do I wait for you to flip before I flip my cup over or? Generally, you will follow the host. Okay. So the host is essentially the general and they decide the speed of how everything follows out. So we will turn it over. You're the commander. Great. Generally- Just on that, can I interject? How much noise are you allowed to make while flipping your cup over? As little as possible. Mm. But obviously you want it to flow and look smooth. You don't want to take your time to try and turn it over and look as perfect as possible. Mm. Let's just keep the flow going. Mm. Right, so generally we might have milk. So standard, we would pour the milk in the cup first. How come? This dated back to when we used to drink out of China and to avoid cracking the China with the hot tea, we would have the milk to dilute the heat. Mm. So we would mm. add the milk in and then, excuse my stretching. Oh, I'll, I'll make sure to say that one day. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Our producers didn't get us any milk. We've got hot water, just as an example, but uh, we'll, 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 we'll brush up on our skills Perfect. next time. Perfect. But Courtney, do you see a strong demand with regard to this? I mean, do you, do you host several workshops across the country as to how to conduct yourself at dinner parties and, and even a coffee appointment like this? Most certainly we do. In fact, a lot of the top CEOs say, if you do not have the correct dining skills, if you've skipped that, what else have you skipped? Hmm. Because they're such basic skills to master. Okay, shall we uh, pour our, or rather stir our cups and? Right, so if we were to add sugar, the worst thing to do is to now tap the glass. Okay. So you want to try avoid. Clockwise, anti-clockwise. Doesn't matter. Which so no noise, no mixing roughly. Fraser, you can make less noise. <laughs> <laughs> So you don't want to bang against the side of the cup. So you can either go back and forward or in a circular motion, but as long as you're not resting the spoon on the actual cup, you never lick your spoon afterwards. You put never. it to the side, never What if ever. it's a cappuccino? <sighs> it's I, I, a devilish <laughs> thing you have to resist, I suppose. And then when you hold your cup, your thumb will go on top with your finger between, no pinky out and to the mouth. No pinky out. One more question. Can you dip your cucumber sandwich in your tea? <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> not. <laughs> so not recommended. But Fraser, I'd like no. to come to you. When it comes to, um, you're a public speaker with regard to happiness and, yes. and experiencing uh, pleasure and passion maybe when we're conducting a job. Mm. Are we seeing that also filtering through the pipelines with regard to South African corporates? Because usually we, we get stuck in jobs just for the sake of working. There's a worldwide tsunami mm. towards happiness in the workplace. What they have found is that happy workplaces are far more uh, profitable, they're far more productive, there's less staff turnover, more engagement at work, and I've noticed with, uh, with real, um, that, that FNB mm. have had two conferences on workplace and ha uh, workplace happiness over the last two years. Now, I think that FNB is doing very well, and I think that they are applying the principles of workplace happiness in their bank, and we're seeing that reflected in the share price. They're finding that there's more innovation in, workplace, uh, in workplaces that are happiness, mm. or that are happy. And I must tell you that uh, it's been an incredible journey just finding out about this. South Africa really needs happy workplaces because if you look at mm. the news, you see very unhappy workplaces. It strikes, it's, it's, Absolutely. it's protest action. Yes, and those are all, uh, that's all evidence that we need to do something about making workplace 
happiness a, pri a priority. Judging by the sound of things, it doesn't sound like a, a, a cheap course to attend. Does it uh, come out to be quite a, bus a costly business that you're working in? No, not at all. And in fact, uh, forgetting my fees for the moment, actually implementing workplace happiness practice is a very inexpensive um, exercise for businesses. Mm. They can implement it with very little cost whatsoever and they should everyone should be looking at this right now it's the best investment you'll ever make very true because uh, your, yeah. your your human resources are probably your most important uh, uh, asset in your company but what are the Absolutely. top three things that employers need to take into account Fraser to ensure that their employees are in a happy environment employers no one can light a fire under their employee you can't motivate your your employee to be happy They've got to be responsible for their own happiness. What employers have to do is they have to create an environment mm. in which happiness prevails. And there's a, a notion that it's money that makes people happy. That only uh, is fourth or fifth on the, on the rung of, uh, of criteria that make people happy. Essentially what it is is two things, and that is results and relationships. By results, I mean Man, I kicked butt at work today. I really did a fabulous job. I contributed positively to my company and I derived real happiness from the work itself. Mm. The second thing, and obviously uh, within that there's um, things like praise, acknowledgement, recognition. Maybe a raise. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the second thing is relationships. What does that mean? It means I like the people that I work with they like me, I feel like I belong, I feel I can be who I am at work. Mm. And essentially those are the two things that make one happy at work. Hmm. It's not the corner office, it's not the credit card, it's not the uh, bonuses and whatever. They found that bonuses do keep you happy for two weeks. Oh. And someone said, well, every two weeks you should give a bonus then. <laughs> Very true. But uh, Courtney, just to close off with you, uh, uh, working in partnership with your father there, Fraser, uh, yes. what are you hoping uh, this ethical school which you've launched as well as his skills with regard to in motivating and encouraging people to work in a happy in corporate environment, what change are you hoping we'll see maybe the next five years with regard to how corporate cultures will change? I'd like to see people encompassing how we treat each other mm. better. In fact, what it comes down to is how we interact with people. So the happiness in the workplace is how we interact with each other. Etiquette is how we make those around us feel comfortable. I'm hoping to see a positive change in people where we're supporting each other, where, we, where we're encouraging each other and building a national unity and pride. I think essentially that's what I would love to see, is greater national unity. Gosh, that's a significant statement to make. Never mind the bottom line, but greater <laughs> yes. national uh, unity. Thank you so, so much for your time to the both of you. I take Thank it out, book my next appointment. And uh, no pink, is it? I take it out, you put my pen down. That's it. Okay. <laughs> Thumb on top. Excuse it, it has a plaster. And that's all right. And, and sip naturally. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. Hey. Cheers. Thank you so much to Courtney Carey, or rather Courtney Carey, who's the co-founder as well as uh, director of the School of Etiquette, as well as Fraser Carey, who is a trainer at the school, as well as a professional speaker on success and happiness in the workplace.